Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to look into sculpting some heads. Sculpting a human head can be a challenge, but it's a very rewarding skill for any artist out there. I'm Isa Vlamia and in this video I'm going to show you three approaches that I use when I'm sculpting a human head. The first approach will be sculpting a head from a simple sphere, just freestyling it. The second approach will be sculpting over a skull model that I already prepared beforehand. If you want to see time lapses of me sculpting a skull, there are a few on this channel and I'll link them up there. And the last approach is something I like to call academic approach. Here we will try to emulate some of the traditional clay sculpting techniques. Starting with the first approach, freestyling from a simple sphere. This sculpt took about 55 minutes to complete. As you can see, I start with roughing in the main proportions rather heavily and I add main landmarks quickly to get the feel of the overall shape and then I fix proportions as I'm going along. The beauty of this method is that it allows for an unlimited creativity and spontaneity. The caveat, it also requires a good knowledge of the underlying anatomy and a great eye for proportions. You will actually see me struggling with finding right shapes and going over certain parts, like the mouth, multiple times in order to get the look I'm happy with. I find that when I use this approach, I tend to end up with more stylized heads, almost cartoon-like, with certain proportions being exaggerated, like a very heavy jawline and forehead. I kind of call them Frankensteins. Once I'm happy with the main shape, I start working on adding smaller details and refining the areas that I'm not happy with. Here you can see that I've gone into a bit of a weird zone with the lips. I try to fix them, but it's all in vain. So as you can see, I very quickly get rid of them and start again drawing some lines to help me establish the proportions and then re-sculpting the lips again. At this point, I'm fairly happy with the overall shape of the face and the head. So I start adding a little bit of hair. I smooth out the face a little bit, just so that you can't see the big brush strokes. And I just try to refine all the shapes a little bit. But you can still see that it's quite heavy in the features. So this is something that tends to happen when I free sculpt. I tend to over exaggerate many of the shapes. And then even though I smooth them down, you still see the very heavy features that I put there in the first place. And that's the first head done. Now let's move on to the second approach of sculpting a head from a skull. This method was inspired by a video I've seen on a channel by another artist called FinGB. There is a video of him sculpting a demon princess where he starts from a skull and I thought it was a really interesting technique so I decided to give it a go myself. I will link his video down below and his channel as well. Check his stuff out, he's a really great artist. For me this was a very good way to get to the decent results fast. So I really enjoy this one. The sculpt here only took 44 minutes as opposed to the first freestyle sculpt and it was much easier to get the good looking correct proportions for it very quickly. Let's start with the pros of this approach. Using a sculpt can provide a solid foundation for our head sculpture. It helps us to understand the underlying structure of the head and that's crucial for achieving realistic results. And as I mentioned, it keeps proportions in check. You almost don't have to think about them as you go along. You can just concentrate on how you want the features to look. Also, sorry, this video, the first half of it was screen capture because that brush crashed and then I could only do the smooth looking nice half of the video afterward. But yeah, you can see how quickly I established the main features of the head. It already looks fairly decent so from there on it's just about refining the shapes and smoothing things out a little bit and you can see this already avoids the problem of the first one where the jaw is not so heavy and overall the shape just looks a lot more natural at least to my eye the con of this approach is of course you have to sculpt a skull to begin with but good news is that skulls are actually much easier to sculpt than heads and once you sculpt a couple, you can reuse them again and again. And here is the second head done. Both the freestyling and skull-based methods have their merits, but now let's try out something more traditional, replicating clay sculpting techniques in the digital realm. 
I was inspired to try this after watching a tutorial on clay sculpting a human head by one of my favorite YouTube sculptors, Stekka. I will link down to his channel below and to the video that inspired me to try this approach. Check out his stuff, he's an amazing clay sculpture artist. The key here is to measure out everything beforehand and sculpt the head planes before refining it into something more human looking. We start off with a couple of spheres and measure everything out carefully, making sure the proportions are correct right out of the gate. We then proceed to defining the sharp head planes that will ensure our head has correct volumes once I start adding the details. Now that these are in place, and I'm happy with the overall look of the model, I can start refining it, smoothing out the sharp plane changes and adding some more detail to make it look more natural. So let's go over the pros and cons of this approach, at least the way I see them. The pros for me are better control over the proportions and shapes. You can ensure that you get the correct shape before you go into any detail. You can also create some plane heads that you can use as a base for future sculpts so you don't have to start from scratch every time. Now the cons, it takes slightly longer and it's a harder initial setup. The way I work in ZBrush is usually by adding clay, building shapes up while here quite a few steps require cutting off or cutting in. So it's a little bit of a different workflow that works well in traditional clay sculpture, but is a little bit harder to replicate in ZBrush, at least with the way I'm used to working. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. But I feel it's worth the trouble though, as the results I get from this approach are more predictable and have better proportions than when I freestyle. And it also gives me a larger degree of freedom right away in comparison with the skulls approach, where the shape of the head is largely defined by the skull model below. So with that one I first have to sculpt the head and then go in and tweak the proportions, which sometimes can be a bit strange. So there we go, these are all the three approaches. I use all three. I use uh, the first approach when I am sculpting stylized heads. I use the second one when I want something more precise. And the third one is quite new for me, but I really hope I will be using more of it, because I see a huge potential there. I hope you found this video about different head sculpting techniques useful and inspiring. Which of these techniques do you think works best? Do you use a different technique perhaps? Let me know down in the comments below, it's always interesting for me to see how people approach solving the same problem from different angles. Remember, sculpting is all about practice and experimentation, so don't be afraid to try things out and see what works best for you. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to this channel. I put up a new video every week, usually on a Thursday. Most of the time it's time lapses of my sculpts, but if you want to see more of the talking head videos, let me know as well, and I'll try to do more of this. Thank you for joining me today. Until next time, keep practicing, keep sculpting, and keep being awesome.